This week, what are we going to talk about? Uh, Seneca again. Oh my god, surprise. What a surprise. We've only been talking about it for about mm, three or four weeks. I probably should have done a series on it, but mm, I mean, I just can't feel like putting another series out there just because whatever. But this one is letter 12 from that book that I referenced, actually showed you last time. But it's letter 12 and pretty much what he's going through in that letter is when he's messaging his friend, well, messaging, he's writing to his friend. He's talking about how he's going to like his old childhood house or whatever and, you know, he sees all this change and all this like, um, you know, he's become an old man now and he sees like all this difference and, but he takes a different viewpoint. He's not saddened by that, like he's now gotten old and he's going to die. In fact, what he talks about mainly is how death, pretty much the crux of what he tries to get to in the point of that letter is that every, you never know when death is going to happen. Like no one can predict, you know, everyone would ideally like to die, you know, you know, old and comfortably, but not everyone, you know, obviously gets that opportunity. And the Jew and the reason due to that is we kind of just don't know when we're going to die. It's one of those things. And he talks about, you know, when people die, you know, die before old age, you know, people say, oh, you know, it's a shame, like, what a life, you know, all that life was, like, um, that person's life was cut short, that, sorry, that was the phrasing he uses, or, like, um, kind of, like, relies upon is, people tend to say, oh, that person's life was cut short, but what he challenges with is, no, that life, if it was lived, like, was lived to its fullest, then there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it ending at that point, even though it might be shorter, like, chronologically, or, like, you know, in block of time compared to other people's lives. The point he tries to make is people can live a much longer life, but a less full one, as opposed to someone whose time is shorter, but they live a fuller life overall. And I think that's a kind of mentality we can take to our everyday lives. And it's something I've talked about on this channel before and about, um, you know, you know, even different other philosophies or, you know, I, I, D, I, D, ideologies have kind of brought this forward is this idea of like, you know, you should try and not worry too much about like how long your life is going to be or, you know, stuff like that. It's more about trying to live it to the fullest as possible. So what he says is consider each day that you live as to be like, try to live that one as if it was the last one you were going to ever like have to live. And for that, live it to the highest, you know, like li li live it to such a point that like, if you die, if you did actually die, that you could say you ended it on a very good note. Like you ended it on a high note instead of, you know, a, a downer. Right. And I think that can really help contextualize our lives because, you know, in most instances we'll wake up and we won't die at the end of the, like, you know, the end of the day we won't die. But if we at least kind of look at it through that lens of how could I live this day like do this in the morning, like how can I live this day that if I did, if I was to die, I could say that I lived it, like, you know, I ended it on a high note, like I ended on on a, on a good day. I think that's what he, he's trying to really say in this letter and the, the point he's trying to get across so that like, you know, when you do have that day, when you do finally have to pass away, because you've gone through this habit and routine of every single day, you've tried to live your life as the best capstone day you know, the cap, the capstone that, you know, kind of, and rounds off the end of your life. Like if you've gone through the habit of your entire life, you know, living each day as if, you know, it could be your last and you've always tried to get the most out of it and live the most fullest life possible. And I'm not, that necessarily doesn't mean about like, you have to do a lot of things, but it's like, you, you know, you don't have to do a million and one things in a day to, for it to be a full, full, um, experience. It's more about doing important things that are important to you and things that, you know, obviously you find meaning and fulfillment from and doing that and doing it well, that I think is what would, if you did that over a lifetime, it would create a, you know, legacy that, yeah, not only would your final day be good, but because you've lived every single day as if it could have been your last and you've always tried to make the most of it, it means you're, you've had a full life. So it, it doesn't actually matter necessarily what point in time or what age you're your life is cut, um, you know, cut off, you'll have had a lifetime greater than many other people's who might have a longer, longer time span, but have gotten less out of their life because 
they have, through a range of different reasons, failed to live up to what they could be. And, you know, in the end, they have many regrets. And not saying that, you know, even if you do everything right or, you know, you go through living a life of trying to live the most meaningful and best existence that you can, you know, doesn't mean you're not going to have regrets or worries or things that, you know, might play with the mind even, you know, at any point in your life. It's like everyone's always going to have those. But the more I think you can go down the action and thoughts of what Seneca's talking and what, you know, we've talked about previously and what, you know, like I said, other philosophies and ide- ideologies have talked about when it comes to relation of the perception of death. I think if you kind of practice that and hold that into your belief and value structures, then going about it will actually create less regrets and less worries at the end of your life. Whereas someone who kind of doesn't do that, I think will would naturally just have more because looking back on their life, there'd be so many things that they would look at and feel that they either didn't accomplish or didn't go, di- di- didn't follow through with. And I feel like that's a lot of people's problem is like, I think a lot of people aren't bad initiators of things, but they're bad with the follow through. So, you know, a lot of people start, but then stop things. And look, everyone's guilty of that. Not saying anyone's perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I think, yeah, like, like viewing your life through that, like this could be it. Is this, is this final day something, is this potential final day something I'm proud of? I think that's a way to view your life that could not only like, it's, it's not just purely about, okay, I want to get more done or I want to be more effective or, you know, I want to live a more, uh, meaningful life. I think it's, it's not just that, but it's also coming to terms with death in, a non kind of combative way. I know we've talked, I think I did talk about it earlier, this kind of similar point, which, cause Seneca does bring it up a lot. And this is why I'm kind of like recovering it and stuff like that. But I feel like it's, a, it's another angle that we can look at it. And I feel like this letter chat, like offers a slightly different perspective, but the joint thing between both of them is I think that being, you know, resolutely unafraid of death, not to the point of, you know, recklessness, but being unafraid of that there will be an end point, which we all know will come, but we don't know when, does the, you know, is a good thing to hold because once you have kind of full acceptance of that, and it takes time, it's not something where you can just click your heels together three times and then you're kind of okay with death or like you're, you're accepting of death, but with regular and, you know, committed, uh, effort to shift your beliefs and your values and the way you see things, it, like like I said, it will make you less afraid of that kind of, you know, unfortunate reality of what life is. And if you do get to that stage, you will feel less, you know, I'd say less paralyzed and less hesitant when it comes to doing new things or, or taking a risk or do, you know, like doing what needs to be done, but might not be done by most people. I think that's probably the best way I'd like to put it. And yeah, so I guess that's this, this episode for this week. I think I might give the Seneca a little bit of a dodge for a little while. There's only like one or two more I'd like to cover, but like, I mean, I kind of want to go on to something else, uh, just because I've kind of read that book you know, like that looked a lot, that book a lot. And I think some of the, these later ones, the last remaining two are a little bit like recycled of the other ones, which we could have, you know, could do another video, but you know, I could just save it for a later date when I feel like it's a good time to use that as a, um, as a backup. But yeah, you know, thank you so much for watching and listening. And if you enjoyed the content, just leave a like and a follow and I'll see you next week. Bye.